to the 1% Club. We are glad you're here. And uh, what a great day we're going to have. Yes, I just flew in last night or the night before at 1 a.m. from the Caribbean. It was awesome. So good to be here. I'm wearing my Build at Sea uh, shirt, Build Leaders, baby. That's what we're all about. Great to see everybody, man. What is up, Shay? They're looking for my glasses right now, so I'm blind as a bat. Frank Crandall, uh, Herb, what's going on? Hi, hi, Shana, Shanaz, good to see you. If I'm missing up maples now, I can't see a thing without these. So let me, uh, everything's blurry. I think that's Clark Broom. It is Clark Broom. Hey, Clark. <laughs> Melanie Weaver, Jason Justak. Hey, guys, good to see you. iPhone 2 sideways, good to see you. Sean, what's up? <laughs> You're driving, just stay sideways. It's fine, no problem. All right. Well, we got a great day for you, man. I'm stoked. I am prepared. I'm locked and loaded. Everybody right now, grab a, a, a notepad, get a pen. You're going to want to take notes today. This is going to be fire. Mm. So let's get this party started. By the way, I just got my new passport. I am headed to Fiji in three weeks to celebrate being married to my sweet wife for 34 years. I'm taking her to Fiji. I'm, I'm, that's where she wanted to go. Honestly, it's not where I wanted to go. I know it's crazy. Um, let's see if I can show you this. I just got a picture today from the Tony Robbins staff. It's a it's a a life and health. Uh, like two weeks, I have to eat wheat grass. <laughs> I know, I know. I got to eat. You know, I don't know what they're going to make me eat and drink for like two weeks and detox your body and all this. But uh, I went to the doctor today. I got my vitamin B12 shot. I got my peptides. I got my my uh, testosterone shot. And I'm like, and they, by the way, don't be scared. It doesn't take kick in for a week so in a week um stay away from me because i may be a, an absolute monster they up my dosage 40 percent testosterone me monster me caveman me make fire all right let's get this party started so um okay you ready T write this down number one so here's here's my kind of the if i had to in, uh, title my talk today it's called faith versus fear if I had to give you a title, title, baby, faith versus fear, you got a decision to make. Melanie, Clark, Sh Sh Shanaz, if I hope, hope I said that right. I'm trying, Shanaz. I think I got it right. Um, did I get it right? Give me a thumbs up. Did I get it right, Shanaz? Did I get it? Yes, you did. Yes. Courtney, David Lawson, Carolyn. So here's the deal. You have a, Are you going to live in faith or are you going to live in fear? People who do great things with their life. Mother Teresa lived in faith. Martin Luther King lived in faith. How about this one, David, girls? Helen Keller, born blind, deaf, mute, couldn't talk, couldn't see, couldn't hear. I just had to feel her way and learn how to communicate only by touch. And she had faith. And the woman is like amazing. Like every time you feel sorry for yourself, yeah. just realize that people get it way tougher than you do way tougher. Um, well, I can't even tell you the story, but here's the deal, man. Abraham Lincoln lost every election he ever went for, went bankrupt twice, divorced twice, failed businesses like five times. The only political race he ever won was the presidency of the United States of America. Babe Ruth, the year he became the home run king, simultaneously set the record for striking out. That's pretty powerful. And so my message to you today is don't be afraid to fail and walk in faith. You know, if you are a man of faith or a woman of faith, and I realize not everybody is, so I'll, I'll go easy. But um, if you are a man of faith or a woman of faith, it says all through the Bible, do not be afraid. It says it like 378 times. It was kind of an important message because that is a tool of the enemy. That is like, you know, your kids, oh, dad, someone's under my bed. Someone's in my closet. As adults, we say, oh, no, the sky is falling. Interest rates are going to go up. They're not going to go down. Jo uh, Kamala's going to get elected. Uh, Trump's going to get elected. Because you know, some people love Trump. Some people hate him. Some people love Kamala. Some people hate her. But here's the deal. What's it got to do with you? I get it. Vote, put the best people in office. And yeah, it, it could definitely have an impact. But you need to succeed no matter who gets voted in the presidency of the United States of America. And if you, you got to watch your attitude, man, your attitude determines your altitude. 
People with good attitudes tend to do better in life. Who do you hire if you do employ people moving with bad attitudes, walking around like they've been sucking on a lemon and, and they're they're just terrible or people who smile? I met a woman today in my conference room. Bam. I mean, we shook hands. It was like electric. I'm like, wow. I even commented on it. She was, yeah, I'm a military brat. I was raised by military parents. They taught me to look someone in the eye and give them a firm uh, handshake. And I was like, okay, you're meeting somebody. And so- I, I tell you what, faith versus fear. You can, there's a lot of things that can make you fear, fearful, right? Um, the southern border isn't protected. Um, COVID might come back. It's like what you focus on expands. So you need to focus on where you're headed. You need to focus on what your goals are. You need to focus on who you're hanging out with. Are, are people you're hanging out with making you fearful? Or are they building your faith? Are they lifting you up or tearing you down? So number one, faith versus fear, the decision is yours. Faith versus fear, it feels so much better to walk in faith. It feels so much better to walk in the light. It feels so much better to, to, um, to embrace faith, to, to embrace fear. What is faith? What is the definition of faith? I'll give it to you. A belief in things not yet seen. I have faith that my marriage is going to work out. I have faith that my teenage son or daughter is going to make it. Some of you are wanting, is she going to be okay? <laughs> is he going to be okay? Your teenage son, is he going to be okay? Right? That little voice, right? <laughs> Let me tell you what, faith is he's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. But she's, it, it's certainly by mom stepping up to the plate, dad stepping up to the plate and not like nitpicking them with everything they're doing wrong, praising them for everything they're doing right, man. Not in a spoiled kind of way, but going, man, I see this in you. Using your words to call your children into their future. People, your clients, using the power of your mouth with your clients, with your staff, your transaction coordinator, your virtual assistant in the Philippines, in India, wherever they are. Do you know you have an obligation? That's another human being. They're not a $4 an hour employee. That's another human being with probably a family. And you have an obligation to lift them up, not tear them down, to, to bless them, not abuse them, to, to love them, not use them, right? Leaders bless and lift people up. Users take and, and, they, and they use. Takers use, takers take. L uh, leaders love and leaders give. And they're strong in the face of of um, affliction, right? They're in, uh, in, in, in trauma. And so number one, faith versus fear. Number two, lead and not follow. This is my second point. I'm throwing in a whole bunch, sprinkling in some salad here, some, a bunch of croutons, some uh, whatever you like in your salad, some canning walnuts or whatever, tomatoes. And But here's the deal. I will lead and not follow. What does that mean? It means you could follow the masses and the masses live average lives. They make an average income. They they live a life of regret from usually the masses. They don't do documentaries on the masses. They're just the masses. You know, they were born 1935, passed away 2024, right? And what'd you do? Not much. Well, my dad was born 1935. A lot of you know my dad, Jim Gove, and he's still alive. And he'll be 89 this December. But if you know my dad, mm. You know that he loves you and he cares about you. You ever meet my dad at the events? He's so excited to go to Cabo. We just bought his, got his room and his flight to EXP Con Miami. My mom's you know, point at 87. She can't travel all over the world like that. But my dad would be 89 and he's still a little monster. And he's he's got the energy and he loves you guys. And he, he looks at it, it's his job to go there and encourage you guys. And so, you know, I think life is not about how much money you make, whether you went icon or sponsored 40 people or have 400 or 4,000 people in your group or 40,000. Life is when you entered the room, did you lift it? And when you left the room, was it better because you were in the room? When you joined the, the Zoom, Jeff Robinson, I see you there, Lake Norman. What's up, my brother? When you joined the Zoom, David, Lawson, David Girls, Jason, Justek, when you joined the Zoom, were people excited to see you? Did you did you lean forward and pay attention? Were you talking on the phone the whole time? Were you talking on the phone? Were you were you writing an offer? Were you kind of listening, kind of not listening? Or were you giving it your full attention? Because it's, you know, this is like we're done in 20 more minutes. And it's just a shot in the arm every week, a shot in the arm. You have 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Can you actually show up? And, and I recognize a lot of you, you do show up every week. Take notes because ideas, great ideas are like slippery fish. If you don't stab them with the end of your pen, they get away. That's why you must take notes. 60% more retention, just scribbling. I'm a scribbler. I've, I have... I have books full of notes that I have taken. I scribble. I'm just ripping pages. I'm writing as quick as I can. And then on the plane, I take notes from my notes. I go, uh, oh, that was gold. When Tristan, when when uh, Tristan O'Grady said that, that was gold. When when uh, Robert Warner said this, what's up, Robert from Santa Barbara? Look at that. You look like that's your the wine country right there, down in the, down in that that area, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara. You know, but when 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 Herb Rim said this. That was powerful. I'm going to write that down and commit it to memory. When Courtney Twist said that, when Shanaz did this, write it down. Make it yours. So I will lead and not follow. It means you you will, what do you mean follow? There's a voice in your ear that says, go sit on the couch. Go, don't do the open house today. Probably no one's going to come. Right? Don't door knock today. You did you did the last five days in a row. You did 50 homes a day for five days. You've done 250 doors and not one person was interested. So do you quit? Do you not do Saturday? You said you do it six days this week. Or do you suck it up and get on the struggle bus and go do 50 on Saturday? Because guess what? Ed Milet, who's going to be in Cabo, his, his, his new book, Just One More. Just One More. And you push yourself. Uh, the guy... Um, in Pursuit of Happiness. Will Smith played him in the movie In Pursuit of Happiness. If you watch him, he's just going from phone to phone to phone, calling, 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 and he's pushing himself and he's pushing himself. Do you do, you do that? Do you do that with, with Rev Share, with Agent Attraction? Do you just calling and texting and pushing yourself? Write this down. This wasn't in my notes, but it's, it's gold. Ready? Put this all over your house. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. You want the, your future, your dreams, your goals? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because when it becomes comfortable to be uncomfortable, game over. Nobody's in that zone. Everybody is in the comfort zone. They're in the shallow end of the pool. The ones who are uncomfortable, they're up 90 feet in the air doing the Acapulco high dive. It's not comfortable to jump off a platform at 90 feet. And guess what? The beaches are empty. They're, they're, I'll be, I'll be in Fiji. Oh, I was going to, I forgot to show you, man. Hold on, hold on. I got to find it here. This is worth seeing. Uh, let's see. It's worth it. The second, let's see. Oh, of course, my phone is going to type slow. Got it, got it, got it. Let's see. There it is. Oh, wow. It's not coming up. Why is it not coming up? That is bizarre. All right. Well, I'll do, oh, because it's listed differently. Okay. Here we go. That made sense. So right there, that's where I'm going to be in three weeks. Yay for Brent. But I tell you, if you look at those beaches, they're not overly crowded. The snorkeling, I'm going to be in those little huts right there. And it's not crowded because people don't get on the struggle bus. They don't suffer. They don't humiliate themselves. I've humiliated myself at open houses. I've humiliated myself on the radio. I've been so scared I would have to go to the bathroom and then, and then it took me half a year to get comfortable on the radio. Then I spent 15 years on the radio, but I faced my fear. It, it, I literally, my stomach is doing flips and I'd have to use restroom and then go get on the air. And cause you're talking to, you know, typically 50,000 people every time you go on the air, like are listening, the audience is way bigger, but they say on KFPK it was about 50,000 people listening. And it kind of gets in your head. What if I say something stupid? Let me let you on a secret. You're going to say something stupid. You're going to say things you regret at the listing appointment. I've had sellers get up and walk away from me at the table because I did a stupid thing. I made a mistake. In Loomis and in West Roosevelt, I'll never forget it. Two different sellers got up and walked away from the table and never came back. I didn't, it wasn't that bad. I told one guy the fee was 7%. He got up and just walked away. I don't even know if I made a mistake. It's just my fee. He was kind of rude. He's like, I'm not comfortable paying 7%. He just got up and walked away. I didn't get the listing. You know, some people charge $400 to do your taxes. Some charge 4,000. I pay 4,000 because I want the good guy doing my taxes. Other people are like, heck no, I'm only paying 400. I only pay 200. They go to H&R Block. Does that make everybody bad? 
uh, you know, a community college is almost free. State college is very, but some people go to these universities. They're all different strokes for different folks. My point is this. You want to succeed, make a lot of mistakes in a short period of time, condense it. And you invert that learning curve. It goes like this. So number one, faith versus fear. The decision is yours. Number two, lead and not follow. I will lead and not follow. And I am the voice. That's right out of Tony Robbins' book. I am the voice. What do you mean you're the voice? Are you God? No, God, listen to the Lord. If he talks to you, the Holy Spirit, all that. Yes, I'm not saying that. But there's, there's a voice. One says, who are you kidding? You will never make it. The one says, you got this. I am not lovable. I am lovable. People can't stand me. People love me. There's two voices, you know. Um, she doesn't like me. Every I, th th that's that's one voice. This voice says she loves me. She doesn't know me yet, and it's not arrogant or egotistical or narcissistic. But when you're when you're when your son says I'll never meet anybody, and I think it happens more to the girls. The guys are too dumb, stupid, want to go fishing, hunting, play football, tackle things. They like girls or whatever, you know, but, but the girls, the, the 14 year olds, the 15 year olds, the 16 year olds, I got some 22, 23 and 25 year olds that aren't married yet. Trust me. You know, they, they, you catch them, especially when they're younger going, I don't, I don't think I'll ever meet anybody. I don't know if I'll ever get married. I don't, and that's, that's a voice. Yes, I will get married. I will meet Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright. In my case, I believe and prayed for my wife. I got became a Christian at 19. I prayed for her for four years before I met her. Didn't meet her until I was 23. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for my wife. Didn't even know her, but God, you know where she is. Keep her safe right now. You know, keep her doors locked and the windows rolled up. Help her grow and become an amazing woman of God, a powerful, amazing woman. And, and I prayed for her. I prayed protection and provision that she would grow as a human being. And I know she did the same things for me. So here's my question to you. What are you praying for? Who are you praying for? Kathy and I, this morning, we sat down and prayed over every one of our children, eight of them, by name, specifically in areas they were struggling in. Your kids struggle? Of course. I struggle. My wife struggles. Every one of you struggle. Like, go ahead. Just be honest. I have no struggles. If it, like you have like everything is perfect. You have, you have no relatives with cancer. You have no neighbors that are crazy. You have no struggles in your life. Wave at me. Is there anybody? Nobody. If there is, we'll whoop you up. We'll, 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 we'll come tackle you and we'll give you a struggle. But here's the deal. You know, the, the, the good book says that in this life, there will be trials and tribulations, man. Everybody struggles. You look at Ed Milet doesn't struggle. Ed Milet's had health challenges all year. Ed Milet struggles. Tony Robbins is a struggle. He's the king. Tony Robbins ate too much uh, fish. He ate a lot of fish and he got mercury poisoning and he it hurt his voice. And he, he had to like, he just loves salmon and tuna and fish and the health, but, but he overdid it. And he, he almost lost his voice. Tony Robbins struggles. He's still recu recovering, recovering, recovering from mercury poisoning from years ago, five years ago. We all struggle. I struggle. It's okay. You need to know you're not the only one. You are not alone. That's my message to you. Message to you. By the way, this is funny. Matthew Stewart just popped on here. Where are you, Matthew? Turn your camera on. I, I'm looking. I don't see him yet. Yeah, I just, I admitted him into the room. He just popped in. Where are you, Matthew? Come on. I just let you in. Show yourself. Show yourself. Unless you're in the shower or something weird. Um, you know, there he is. He popped in. His camera's not on yet. We see the black thing. There he is. He's he's uh he's at the handicapped parking doing an open. So guess what I just showed him? Um, where'd he go? Where'd he go? No, that wasn't Matthew, that was Herb. I don't see Matthew. Where's Matthew Stewart? I let him in. I don't see him. Oh, wait, is he he's probably the last guy who filled up the page? Do I not see him? I let him in. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have his camera on or something. There we go. Can you hear me now? I just showed everybody that about five minutes ago. I know. Matt is the one who sent this to me because he and Lexi are coming with us to Tony Robbins' um, uh, Health, Life and Health. Is it called Life and Health? Is that what it's called? Uh, life and Wealth. Life and Wealth. Anyways, but it's really all about your health. It's about your health, you have everything. But I was showing him this picture and telling him how so few people do what it takes. And the road to success, success is through suffering. Herschel Walker, Heisman Trophy worker, suffered. Michael Jordan suffered. Venus Williams suffered. 
you need to know it's okay to suffer. It, you have to get up at four o'clock, five, six in the morning and work out and become a, a professional athlete. They suffered in silence and then they're celebrated in the public eye. And so the guy in pursuit of happiness, sleeping in San Francisco in a bathroom in the BART station, crying, holding his two-year-old because they're worried he's going to lose him to CPS. And he succeeded at such a high level. They made a movie about his life, but it was through suffering. So don't, don't be upset about your suffering. God's using it to develop character in your life. So number one, faith versus fear. The decision is yours. Number two, you will lead and not fellow. I am the voice. You, you take you take the voice. Go, I am full of energy. Oh, I'm so tired. Keep saying I'm so tired. I'm so sad. Keep what you focus on expands. You will be sad and you will be tired. And you certainly want to achieve what you need to achieve. So you have to take control of the thoughts of your mind and speak forth, not name it and claim it, but you got to, it's like you shoot a three throw. Oh, this is going to be bad. I might air ball it. At best, I will shoot a brick. Well, that's not how you make the hoop. How you make the shot is like nothing but net, baby. That's what Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, those guys, nothing but net. Tiger Woods, he sees a shot. It's called shaping shots. You got to see it in your mind first. So my question for all of you today is, what do you see in your mind? And we're, we're, we're like the only primates. Most elephants live. Monkeys live. Fish live. Snakes live. Hawks live. We live, but we can also create in our mind. We can envision a city and build a city. We can envision a boat and build the boat. We can envision a backyard with a pool and a waterfall and palm trees and a cold plunge and a, an outdoor fire pit where your family gathers and it's beautiful. It's got crystal glass and it's all lit up with, with lights up the palm trees and it's on the canyon and that exists. It, it, my wife and I created all that here and just kind of scribbled it out. I don't know, not even good, but then we give it to a landscape architect and he made it look pretty. Come over to my house. It all exists today. We're the only, we were made in the image of God. You have the ability to design and create a future. And so here's the deal. Get excited about your goals and dreams. What are they? Get excited about them. Put in the work and don't make it your God. I hope I hope you don't make a Ferrari or a mansion your God. That's that's not healthy. But we, you know, if you want a three bedroom, two bath with a white picket fence, God bless you. Or if you want a eight thousand square foot home on five acres, God bless you. There's no difference to people living in some parts of this world. A three bedroom, two bath with a white picket fence might as well be a sixteen thousand square foot home with the indoor basketball court and hoop. It's all. It's really gets down to do you worship God or or, or, or money. Or do you love people and serve people? And so um, number three, love is the key. Love is a, absolutely the key. You, you want to raise any room? Love the room. Love the people in the room. Well, yeah, my people aren't that good. God puts you there. Don't judge them. Love them. Lift them up. Your room. And you'll upgrade your room through coaching, through being intentional about coming to uh, Charlotte, build. I can't wait to come out to Charlotte the 11th and 12th. I'll be in Miami the 27th and the 28th and 29th of October for EXP Con Miami. Um, we're going to be in, in Cabo in March, shade the dates, the 11th through the 16th. And uh, Ed Milet's coming out. We're working on Tom Ferry. We're working on John Cheplak. We got Bill Pipes. We got Coach Burt uh, coming out. We're going to have the biggest group of stars, big major scene speakers we've ever had, biggest turnout. Like, say the dates, March 11th through 16th, but bring people. So number three, love is the key. Number four, once you get the love part right, then you follow it up with massive action. Because some of you do the massive action, but you don't do the love part. I don't really have to love my clients. Yes, you do. I don't really have to love my staff. My staff need to serve me. My staff need to do what I told them to do, and they need to do it expeditiously with a smile on their face. Well, that may be true that hopefully you hired those kind of people, but here's the deal. Your job is to look for opportunities for your staff, to love your staff, to not pay them as little as possible, then get as much as you can out of them. That's the way users think, but you want to pay them generously and you want to look for opportunities for them. And guess what? As you do unto others, so will be done for you. People will create, if like, well, no one's creating opportunities for me. Well, who are you creating opportunities for? You sow what you reap. You're not sowing opportunities. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's help your painter find a painting job. Help your roofer find a roofing job. 
right? Help somebody find a job who needs a job. But I don't make any money. They're, they're not, there's no rev share. I don't get a stock award. I, they're not joining my team. I mean, really helping my plumber get a plumbing job? Yes. When you start doing that kind of stuff, you're winning at the highest levels. The, 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 the size of the window you give through is the size of the window you get through. You, it's not just money. You can give love. You can give words of affirmation. Some of you have had so few words spoken over you about who you are and what God made you to do. And you have the, but see, and think, yeah, that's not fair. Don't be a victim, but turn around. Who, what can you say to someone about their smile or about their quick wittedness or about their customer service ability or about how they're such a server or about how they're so loving or how they, they, when they walk in the room, they just light it up. Every time you're around them, you make like, I can't even tell you how much, how good you make me feel. I just want to say, thank you. Like words are powerful. The, the biggest lie in the world, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Are you kidding? Words destroy people. Adolf Hitler used words to destroy people. Stalin, the, the communist manifesto. Words, words are way worse than sticks and stones. They can be used for good or evil. The Bible says the tongue has the power of life and death. So what do you use your words for? When you go home tonight to your family, you can use your words for the power of life or the power of death. And like, yeah, but you don't know my teenage daughter, my teenage son. They're so disconnected. You're the dad. You're the mom. You're the king. You're the queen. You get in there and fight and take it and take it and take it and love them and love them and love them. And all of a sudden they will pop out the other side. She's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. But you're going to fight for, oh, I'm busy. I'm, I'm busy in real I'm busy, busy, busy. I'm busy being busy. I would change that. I would decide when you're going to work and work like an animal. It is winter. Work like an animal. Have fun, love people, and just go for it. But when it's time to be home, it's time to be home. Like right after this, I'm going to go to McCoonies with Lewis. And, and we're going to go to McCoonies. He doesn't know it. He's meeting me at 2.30. I miss lunch. I'm hungry. We're going to McCoonies, okay? And so um, I got to show him here, Rob. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys this, but we're at my office here in Roseville. There's my office. There's Rob. But out here, they were trying to find a famous Brent Gove quote, which my favorite quote, by the way, is, it's not the force of the gale, but the set of your sail that determines your direction in life. I say it all the time, but all they could think of was this one, right? Let's go to McCoonies, baby. Sushi. There, It's literally on the wall. They had a sign, they had a, a sign company put that up there. So it's true. My uh, sushi, if I were to get the electric chair, what electric chair, what's your last meal? It would be McCoonies sushi. That's kind of funny. But I love sushi. So, okay. So we're going to keep going. So once you get love going, once you get love, then you do massive action. All of a sudden, your open houses are more effective. Your door knocking is more effective. Your cold calling is more effective because you're infectious, man. Passion is infection. Passionate love. Um, there's a book written by Francis Chan, and the book is called Crazy Love. Crazy Love. What can be done with love? Love will transform your family. It'll transform your love life. It'll, it'll make life meaningful. Like, even if you've never become a millionaire, even if EXP never works out for you, even if EXP goes away, really, in the end of your life, it was about who did you love? And, and uh, I get it. It takes money to pay the bills and all that. I'm not saying money is irrelevant. But what is vital is that your kids, your spouse, your significant other, your neighbors, your colleagues, your coworkers, your clients, that you just... You don't love people who could do things for you. You're like a gangster. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. That's like the mafia thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, there's a brotherhood in the Crips. M13, I think, is the famous Mexican gang. But they, they take care of their own. I love you, brother. And, and they literally, there's a, there's a loyalty and a, a thing. They have a, a thing. This goes beyond this. This is giving people the shirt off your back. This is loving people who don't deserve to be loved. This is, this is because it's who you are. It's your essence. It is your essence. And so um, when, you, when you kick in the massive action with love, that is good. Number five, what you focus on expands. You ever catch yourself feeling sorry for yourself? That you're feeling sorry for yourself? Because you're feeling sorry for yourself. In other words, it's like this whirlpool and it just goes down. You stop that. 
think about what's good. You could, you could, you could be a victim. I can't pay my electric bill. I'm too much behind on the mortgage. They're going to come take my car. And you stay there. Just stay there. And you're going to feel pretty terrible, but you focus on expands. Tell me what's good about your life. It's a fresh air today. You know, it's a blue sky out there today. Some of the trees are blossoming. It's just gorgeous here in Northern California. I got people that love me. Who? My dog. My dog loves me. You know, but like, what is it? What you focus on expands. You better, you better get a hold of that. And um, number six, as a man thinketh, so is he, so is she, as a woman thinketh. So is she. What do you think? You see with your kids, mom, dad, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yes, you can, son. Yes, you can, daughter. And then you're you're a grown man. You're a grown woman. And I'm saying, yes, you can, son. Yes, you can, daughter. Yes, you can, sister, brother. It's like we a number number seven, 80% of the chokehold in your business is your personal psychology, right from Tony Robbins. Right from Tony. He's the number one guy in the world. He says it as people's personal psychology, man. They just flat don't think they can. Henry Ford, 100 years ago, said, if you think you can, you probably can. If you think you can't, you're probably right. If you think you can, you probably can. If you think you can't, you're probably right. Number eight, victim or victor, the choice is yours. Be a victim. Be grateful. I mean, I'm sorry. Be victorious. Be a victor. I said that wrong. Don't be a victim. Be victorious, right? The choice is yours. Don't play the victim. Anytime you feel sorry for yourself, you're usually playing the victim. Woe be me this. Woe be me that. Number nine, trials and tribulations. We all have them. Don't be surprised. Lean into them. And um, wipe the sweat off your brow and the blood off your face. You know, you ain't so tough. You ain't so bad. Is that all you got? Let's go. And, and, you know, if you're not a man or woman of faith, then it's you and that. But if you are a man of faith, you know, you have like God on your side. And 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 that that is encouraging to me. Finally, welcome to winter. You're in winter. Just it is what it is. 40% recession of units. Lean into it. Lean into it. It only gets better from here. You we're at the we're right here scraping along the bottom. It's going to get better. But you you succeed here. You learn how to sell real estate here. You learn how to do attraction here. It only gets better. So I love you guys. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's. Uh, um, I prepared for this. And hopefully you, you found it good. 1% um, club. And by the way, this is to do what only 1% of the agents do. This is like, people don't think like this, do this stuff. You got to own it. Like, get a copy of this. Do we put this up on YouTube? Send it out. Yeah. So um, if if you should all get an email of the 1% Club every week. Wave at me if you do not receive an email with these copies every week. You should get it every week. Wave at me. So there's a bunch of people that, that don't get it. Jason, you don't get this 1% Club email to you every week. Okay, so how would they sign up for it? Okay, so email, if you want to be added to our distribution list, so if you miss a 1% club and you're like, wow, those, or, or like maybe today I spoke to you, like maybe today's message was something you needed to hear. I asked God, what do I need to share for them to hear? Um, it's rob at brentgove.com. Is that the right one? Yeah. Good. Okay, so rob at brentgove.com, and he'll add you to our distribution list, because I don't think we put these on YouTube. Um we do sometimes i like them and i go put that one on youtube but the idea this is for you guys and and this is for people who are ideally supporting sell a home save a child i created the one percent club for people who support sell a home save a child you're like oh, i didn't know that i shouldn't be here i'm glad you're here and maybe someday you can help support sell a home save a child give them 25 bucks a month 50 dollars a month whatever you don't have to but that that was how it was eventually originally created a few years ago people that supporting that because there's you got to have a bigger call in your life and and taking care of children and widows no better better thing you could do all right guys you're one percenters you're going to live a life that the other 99 percent won't do because you're willing to do what they will not do i will do today what others will not do so tomorrow I'll live the way they'll never live i will do today what others will not do i will suffer so that tomorrow i will live the way they won't live get it comfortable being uncomfortable I'll see you guys in six minutes with Mastering Sales with Brent Gove. Love you. We're out. We'll see you guys. Be good.